Seems a little weird, but very few people can actually digest milk. The thing is, there's some special enzyme, let's call it a little helper, that breaks down the sugars any milk has. When people grow up, they run out of this enzyme, and only a little over 30% of all people retain some of it. Our brain can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. Don't even try to compare your brain with a phone capacity. Not even the one you had back in 2005. A mere byte is 8 bits. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some info, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall 7 or fewer items from the list. Working memory is an essential thing that we need to perform almost any everyday activity, including basic conversations, navigating in the city, and even trying to copy the moves from a workout video. If you wear a hat, it actually warms your hands and even feet. With a hat, the heat is basically trapped inside, and it circulates all over your body, including toes. Finally, good news! Fingernails grow faster than toenails. So you can officially cut the toenails a bit less often. I don't really like to bend to take care of those claws on my feet. If you're sleeping, it doesn't mean that your whole body rests. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. Humans can't multitask. It's true. We need time to switch from one task to another. But if we try to tackle several things at the same time, it's not going to be very productive. Now, you're most likely to be unable to isolate your ring finger. Every time you move your pinky or the middle finger, you'll move the ring finger too. The ability to isolate it is hereditary. When you stretch out your arms, the distance between the tips of your fingers is almost equal to your height. Now, it's not true that people can't touch the nose with their tongue. This superpower is called the Gorlin sign, and about 10% worldwide can perform it. Try this one. Lift your right foot and start rotating it in a counterclockwise direction. Try to write the number 6 with your big toe in the air. Now, check the direction your foot's moving. It's moving in the opposite direction because to write the number 6, you need to make a counterclockwise movement. People with double-jointed thumbs can bend them backwards. Looks super unusual, and very few people can do that. Still, it's totally okay. It doesn't hurt to bend a thumb this way either. Hey, next time you're talking to a friend, try to breathe in through your nose. Don't pause to inhale, try to do it in the middle of a sentence while speaking. (laughs) That can be rather tough. Only about 1% can do that, and they're usually musicians. Our brain is actually pretty large, almost as large as a pillowcase. It's squeezed into a relatively small head just because it's very wrinkly. If you could spread it out, you'd see how brainy you really are. We're made of teeny tiny cells. To see just how small those cells are, imagine that 10,000 of them could fit easily on the head of a pin. You could literally glow at night. Many fish, algae, and fungi are bioluminescent, and so are you. Turns out that human beings can emit light. Nope, your friends aren't going to ever see that without special tools, so you can't really brag. It actually takes a bit longer to start a new habit. It's not 100% true that 18 or 21 days are enough as many people think. The process of getting a new habit can take up to 254 days. But on average, it takes around 66 days for a new habit to become automatic. If you want to become a tiny bit happier, try spending some money on others. People are social creatures, and we used to need others' help to survive. Our brain developed a reward system. When we do something positive for others, we get oxytocin, one of the happiness hormones. Now, when you're asleep, you won't smell anything nasty. 
The thing is that your sense of smell deactivates at night. If there's some really terrible smell in your bedroom, you won't even be bothered. It's been believed for a long time that a person could distinguish more than 10,000 smells. A recent research showed that people were able to distinguish more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Tomatoes have more genes than humans. This shouldn't concern you, though, because it's not the number of genes that matters, but the complexities of their connections. Fingernails don't only help us catch random tiny objects and peel the stickers off. If you didn't have a rigid structure against which to press, you wouldn't be able to judge how firmly to hold anything. Now, your toes are the humble helpers that carry about 40% of your weight. If you've ever heard that humans don't really need their toes, don't believe it. They're also the main pushers when you walk. We've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection. That's why, when the reflex is triggered, these muscles shut the eyes within about 100 milliseconds. That's not more than 0.1 seconds. If you find hairs in the bath after having a shower, it doesn't mean you're going bald. This is normal, because an average person sheds 40 to 150 hairs per day. Baldness becomes noticeable after you've lost more than 50,000 hairs. We recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. All the hair you see on your head is only about 10-15% to of all the hair you've got. This hair is in its resting phase, and it either doesn't grow or sheds. 80-90% to are actually growing at any given time. Retinal scanning is more reliable than fingerprint scanning. The fingers have about 40 unique characteristics, and the eye has 256. We feel about 80% of the taste of any food, thanks to the nose and its ability to recognize odors. If you hold your nose while eating, you will taste almost nothing. You might have a chocolate bar or smoked fish in your mouth. There will be no difference for you. Your nose doesn't just help you breathe and catch odors, it filters the air for sensitive throats and lungs. If we inhale dry air, the nose moistens it, cools it, and heats it if it's necessary. Also, the nose cleans the air from dirt. Hey, where do you think boogers come from? The human eye has some resemblance with a car engine. They both need various liquids to work properly. An engine needs oil lubrication, and an eye needs tears. In order to work well, the tear should be thoroughly distributed all over the eye. That's why we blink up to 20,000 times a day. So, an eyelid is a bit like a windshield washer. We can accidentally digest small objects, such as plastic items, glass, coins, and many other small objects. They'll make their way through the digestive tract within 48 hours. See you later! We can digest plastic in case of emergency and in tiny quantities, but the human digestive system can't really bear grass. Grazing animals have special teeth and several stomach sections to process raw leaves and grass. Well, we have none of that equipment. That's why we have cows. Ever wondered why you feel so sleepy after lunch? Well, that's because your circadian rhythms, which have 24-hour cycles, demand you have a nap after 7 hours of being awake, and food just adds to this effect. When you crave a snack, it's your brain sending you a signal that you're lacking some vitamins or minerals. You probably don't want candy as bad as you think you do. So just have a couple of nuts instead. No, not me. You may have this rare body feature already and not know about it since sometimes even an x-ray can't spot it. Most of us have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means we were born with 24 ribs. There are some folks, though, that actually have 25 ribs. Only 1 in 200 people have this rare extra feature, and it's called a cervical rib. 
It generally appears above the first rib, right at the base of the neck and above the collarbone. It's nothing to worry about, though. Most of the time, they're unnoticeable. And if ever painful, they can be safely removed. Do you know how huskies can sometimes have their eyes in different colors? Some people come equipped with this rare feature, too. The medical term for it is heterochromia. The name comes from the ancient Greek word heteros, which translates to different, and chroma, which means color. People with this condition can either have complete, central, or partial heterochromia. The complete type means that the person has two completely different colored eyes, say, one brown and one green. Two different colors in the same eye are what specialists call central heterochromia. A person with a partial heterochromia has just a portion of their eye of a different color. You can either be born with this condition or get it, say, after an injury. Still, it's extremely rare. Less than 200,000 people are diagnosed with it in the US. Either way, let's face it, it does look pretty cool. Speaking of eye color, want to try guessing what the rarest one is? I'll spare you the Google search. It's gray. Blue eyes may have been your first thought, and they are indeed already pretty rare. Only around 8 to 17% of the world's population have this eye color. When it comes to gray eyes, though, they're even more special. Less than 1% of people have them. This rare body feature is caused by a lower level of melanin in the eye's layers. If you're interested in meeting someone with gray eyes, your best chance is in Eastern and Northern Europe. Even rarer eye colors are red or violet, but these can sometimes be the result of different health conditions. There are people out there who have the superpower of seeing 100 million different colors without the help of any fancy gadgets. We see colors thanks to some cells in our eyes named cones. Most of us have three types of cones to help translate what we see into the colors that our brain is able to understand. However, specialists think that there's a small group of people called tetrachromats who have four types of these cones. So far, researchers have only been able to identify women with this condition. That little teardrop-shaped ball hanging in the back of your neck, you know, the one that helps with swallowing your food, is called a uvula. The name comes from Latin and translates to little grape. Surprisingly enough, around 2% of people are born with a bifid uvula, which means that this indispensable organ in them is either split or forked. You sure can surprise others with this cool feature of yours at parties. Joking aside though, people with this bifid uvula may sometimes have trouble eating, drinking, and speaking. They might also have issues with digesting food. Their speech may also sound a bit unusual, but this depends on how much the uvula is split. This particular body feature might not be the perfect trait when going on vacation, but it does allow people to do more with less sleep. They say that famous people like Nikola Tesla, Margaret Thatcher, and Winston Churchill had this super rare feature. This gene, called the DEC2 gene, helps with regulating our circadian rhythms. Those are the natural biological clocks that let us know when we should be sleeping or eating by making us sleepy or hungry. A person with this rare mutation can basically go through a normal sleep cycle in less time. They can feel rested even if they slept for only 4 to 5 hours. That's one superpower I definitely want to have. How about a gene mutation that gives you superhero-like bones? They're basically unbreakable. It also makes your skin less prone to aging. Yep, looks like with this feature, you can walk away from accidents unharmed and even withstand the flow of time. Some other people out there come with a very attractive feature, but it can go unnoticed, at least at first glance. They have a little something called distichiasis, which basically means an extra row of eyelashes. Just in case you're wondering about the medical aspects too, it results from a genetic mutation of a certain gene. As beautiful as it may sound, people with that extra eyelash layer can experience some pretty unpleasant sensations in their eyes and, in some cases, even have problems with their vision. If spun glass hair doesn't ring a bell, know that it is, in fact, a condition you might have. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but just FYI, it causes frizzy and dry hair. 
It's basically so unmanageable that you literally can't comb it. It also tends to grow out from the scalp in all directions. As for coloring, it comes in either bright blonde or silver. Most of us have hair strands that are cylindrical. People with this condition have triangular or heart-shaped strands or even flat altogether. It's extremely rare with only 100 confirmed cases, but it does become more manageable with age. Most of us humans have evolved to have some specific traits depending on the area of the globe that we live in. But there is a group of people, specifically those that live in higher altitudes, that developed some pretty cool traits. Let me explain. High altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted to actually thrive out there. For example, those living in the Andes Mountains of South America have red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system a lot more efficient. People living in similar conditions in other parts of the world have also adapted in their own way. They're able to take more breaths so that they can properly supply their bodies with oxygen. This one is very important when it comes to looks, but means little in terms of a person's overall health. I'm talking about pajeboldism. Those who have it lack melanocytes, those cells that produce hair pigment in some parts of their hair. It's most common above the forehead in front of their hairline, but it can also appear on the eyebrows or eyelashes. Folks who have it are born with this condition and carry it throughout their entire lifetime. If you really want to get rid of it, there's always hair dye available, but I personally think it looks super cool. We all know cilantro really isn't everyone's cup of tea. I don't know about you, but it tastes like soap to me. It turns out it's not actually a preference, but rather a gene that causes the plant to have this vile taste instead. A study performed on a group of about 30,000 people revealed that you can find a particular gene variant in people who say that cilantro tastes soapy. This gene has more to do with the odor of the plant than the taste itself. If you're one of those people but really want to give cilantro a chance, either way, there's a small trick you can try. Or ask the people that cook the meals in your household. You can always crush the herb before using it in dishes. Why does that help? Well, because with crushing, the chemicals that are responsible for the soapy taste are broken down and are less likely to taste unpleasant. Wake up one morning, and while you're brushing your teeth, you notice a lump on the inside of your mouth, under your tongue. Immediately, you're concerned. You've never noticed this before? But not to worry. It's just Taurus mandibularis, a simple bony growth on the mandible of your mouth. If you have this extra bit of bone, you are part of the 40% of people with this anomaly. Although it can be more common depending on where you're from. For example, in the USA, this only occurs in 10% of the population. Bones are significant pieces within our bodies. We have 206 of them altogether. But some people may have an extra bone that they weren't expecting. We all have 12 pairs of ribs, equaling to 24 in total. However, 0.5% of people may have 25. The 25th is known as a cervical rib. Present from birth, it grows from the base of the neck, just above the collarbone. It can be on either side, as a fully formed rib or just a thin strand of tissue fibers. There are some parts of our body that have remained with us throughout our evolution as a species, and some of us no longer share that same physical trait. The palmaris longus is a small tendon located in your wrist. By pressing the pads of your fourth finger and thumb, then clenching your wrist, the inside of your wrist will show the palmaris longus popping out. If this isn't visible, then you are part of a relatively small percentage that no longer possesses it. Lacking it has no effects on the strength of your grip, but being absent does give a decreased pinch strength in the fourth and fifth finger. It's believed that this muscle was actively used sometime in the evolutionary process of our species. It hasn't affected our bodies in any way, and it's merely a trait that some of us continue to have. It's also not dependent on either hand, regardless of which hand is dominant. Which hand do you use more often? 
If you're left-handed, you're part of the 10% club. And if you're ambidextrous, you're within the 1% to use both of your hands dominantly. Most ambidextrous people initially only use their left hand. Ambidexterity and left-handedness share the indication that they are using both sides of the brain. Right-handed people are generally dominant only to the left side of the brain. We all have tailbones, a reminder of our long story of evolution. We stopped using our tails around 25 million years ago. Although, while we are still growing as embryos, we go through the process of growing a tail. And after about eight weeks, we lose it completely. There are some cases of humans being born with a tail. There are about 25 confirmed cases known to scientists. Those born with tails, though, won't have any real benefit, other than what the tailbone does for balance, anyway. The tails have no function other than physically being there, as they have no bones. The tails only consist of nerves, vessels, and muscles. Do you find that you are a picky eater? Do you think that coriander tastes like soap? Or you can't stand pineapple on pizza? This may be due to what kind of taster you are. Up to 30% of people are considered super tasters and will experience different levels of enjoyment or disappointment from their foods. Food that is bitter to the super taster will likely be sweet to average tasters who make up 40% of people. There are also 30% of people who are non-tasters and won't find anything too exciting. Do you have the ability to identify musical notes? About 1 in 10,000 people can flawlessly distinguish perfect pitch naturally. Although this doesn't necessarily mean that they will be the next big pop star. They're just able to easily identify a specific musical note upon listening to it. Our eye colors are so diverse. The difference in light exposure to eyes throughout the world determines how much melanin is produced, which helps create many different shades of color. Since migration has become more common over the past hundred years, the variations of shades of color are numerous. Your genes, of course, also playing a huge part. We could list hundreds of different shades of eye color to show how many variations there are, but we'll limit the distinct categories down to six main color groups to keep this brief. The vast majority of people have brown eyes, about 79% of the world's population share this eye color. Once, all humans only had the brown pigmentation, until around 6 to 10,000 years ago, when humans migrated to Northern Europe. A mutation occurred, helping the eyes to adapt to the change of light. Blue eyes became the most common of the mutated coloration, and all of them today can be traced back to one ancestor from Europe. Today, Blue eyes make up around 10% of the human population. Amber and hazel eyes each take up 5% respectively. Gray eyes are up to 3%. And the rarest of eye colors are green ones, consisting of only 2%. Rarer still is heterochromia iridum, where both eyes are of different colors. It's inherited and also affected by other genetic factors. Only 1% of the human population have this incredibly rare attribute. Although blue eyes have become more common, they're only more prominent within areas where people contribute similar variants of genes, since blue eyes are a recessive trait. Just like red hair, which only occurs within up to 2% of the population. If you have red hair and blue eyes, you will be part of the smallest percentile for hair and eye variety that makes up only 0.17% of the human population. Although green, gray, and hazel eyes are less abundant than blue, their genes are more dominant. So, within the small pool of redheads, blue eyes are less likely to occur. The melanin that has helped mutate eye colors can also have other effects on the human body. A genetic mutation that affects the melanin occurs in 0.005% of people in the USA, creating albinism. The occurrence differs in many ways throughout the world, the same as the effects with eyes. In albinism, 
the pigment production is altered to distribute major cells that affect the coloring of the skin, the hair, and the eyes. Most people with albinism will have snow white skin, snow white hair, and their eyes are a pale blue pinkish color, the pupil itself being red. The redness comes from the light reflecting off the vessels in the retina. There is another form of albinism which has a smaller amount of pigmentation, and the shade of skin and hair are slightly darker. Albinism occurs not only in humans, but practically all mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. Do you have a small hole at the front of your ear, above the ear canal? This is the preauricular pit. During the first six weeks of a child's development, long before being born, the auricle, which is the external part of your ear, will develop. The preauricular pit forms when the auricle doesn't fully fuse. This occurs within less than 1% of humans. Although there's speculation that having this little hole is the remnant of gills that we once had from our seafaring ancestors, there's nothing solid to confirm this theory. There are some unique things we have that give us an advantage in everyday life. Some people carry a gene mutation of the DEC2 gene, also known in proper English as familial natural short sleepers. Essentially, it means people within this 1% only require about six hours of sleep each day. Most people will probably feel burned out after a day of this, but those lucky enough to be within this 1% will be sure to make the most out of their day. Have you ever looked at a picture and noticed that the color of something was different to what someone else can see? It may be that you have a rare ability to see more colors than everyone else possibly seeing 100 million different kinds of shades. If you do, you're part of the rare group of people called tetrachromats, who have four cone cells in their eyes, unlike everyone else who has three, and are identified as a trichromat. Studies are varied on who is part of this rare ocular phenomenon, though it's more prominent in females. It's suggested that up to 15% of women have this rare capability. Incredibly, it's an ability also shared with some species of birds, insects, fish, and other mammals.